Hey YouTube, let's paint Arya Stark from A Song of Ice and Fire by Simon. I've been experimenting here and there with painting minis with oils for a while. Not just oil washes, either. Those are at this point pretty much an automatic step in most things that I paint because I just love their effect compared to an acrylic wash. My first forays into painting with oils have been mostly on busts. You can see a couple of Loot Studios busts here that I used oil paints on, for example. Arya is going to be the second actual miniature I paint using mostly oils. Great John Umber was the first, and I originally planned for him to be the subject of this video, but it turns out filming miniature painting can be tricky, and sometimes you end up with no usable footage. So when I painted up the Great John, I realized that using only oils may not actually be my preferred approach. It was a little tricky, for instance, getting good coverage with certain colors on sharp edges of the model. Oil paint is also very delicate until it dries, which means that every errant fingertip or unintentional impact with a cutting mat requires a touch-up while you're still working on the model. As I begin to explore painting gaming minis with oils, I'm going to start out using more of a mixed-media approach, which I think helps me quite a bit. By airbrushing some transparent layers of acrylics onto the model before attacking it with the oils, I set up a basic color that will persist even if I mishandle the model a little bit during the painting process. With the base tone in place using acrylics, I can rely on the vibrant oil paints to push contrast to value and hue and worry less about coverage. So to get the ball rolling, I airbrush thinned down inks and contrast paints over a zenithal value sketch. Zenithal priming is another one of those things that I just always do. In addition to being a time saver when I'm speed painting using inks, contrast paints, and washes, the value sketch helps me to visualize what the model should look like when I'm done with it, picking out shapes and details in a way that a flat coat of black or white simply can't do. As is my custom for song characters, I'm basing my color choices on box and card art. Since I know there's lots of room to change things when I move on to the oil painting stage of the process, I don't worry too much about keeping things neat as I lay down these base tones on the model. Oh, I also paint in the eyes using acrylics before I go any further. I can't for the life of me figure out how to paint eyes at this scale with oils. So if anyone has a tip or two for me on how to make that a little easier, I'd be happy to read it in the comments. It's probably obvious, but you need some different tools to paint with oil paints. A palette of some kind, I use disposable paper ones. Oil paints, need those. Brushes, some for application and mixing, some for blending. A couple of metal cups to hold your thinner, and thinner. Specifically, odorless white spirit. A quick note on safety, odorless white spirit is relatively safe, no matter what people in the comments section might tell you. At the levels of exposure we're talking about for hobbyist painters, and the quantities we use it, the fumes from artist grade odorless white spirit are not dangerous. Crack a window and don't hold your face inches from an open container of this stuff. The odorless formulations of white spirits aren't literally odorless, but they are much, much less toxic than the hardware store variety of white spirit, and that's what you want. Also, please don't drink it, okay? That'd be stupid, and you're not stupid, right? Oh, and if you're a brush licker, don't do that either. I mean, really don't. You shouldn't do it anyway, but especially not with petroleum-based thinners. And double extra especially not when your paint contains cadmium. Cadmium is toxic and probably carcinogenic, but again, don't inhale or eat it and you're going to be okay. I tend to wear nitrile or latex gloves when I use oil paint, more because I'm prone to making messes than for any safety reasons, but it's probably not a terrible idea for you to do the same thing. Until I have more experience and find a way of working that's automatic, I choose to label my disposable palette with the names of the colors I plan to put on it. I do this for two reasons. One, I have a selection of colors that I'm lifting from an article on Figure Mentors, link for that in the description below, about using oil paints for miniatures, and I use the labels as kind of a checklist to make sure I remember to put them all out on the palette. And two, when I'm working, I want to make sure I know which paints I'm mixing together. There's a difference between ultramarine blue and phthalo blue when you're mixing them, and I'd rather not use one when I want the other. It's entirely up to you which colors you use. Technically, I could probably do everything I show you here with primaries, either red, yellow, and blue, or cyan, magenta, and yellow, depending on how you like to color theory, plus white and black. But having a wider range of colors to choose from makes the whole process a little easier. Plus, it's more fun. My default selection of colors from right to left, then down, goes like this. 
hence a yellow light, cadmium, yellow medium, phthalo green, cerulean blue, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, Payne's gray, neutral gray, titanium white, yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt sienna, ivory black, and chromatic black. There's a good chance I don't even use all of these, but we're working with such tiny quantities of paint that I won't be devastated if a little bit goes to waste. As I've become more familiar with painting this way, I'll probably pare down the selection or alter it based on what I know I'll need, rather than try and cover all the bases every time. Oil priming, pre-glazing, or whatever you want to call it is the first step in the process of putting oils on a miniature. For each of your base tones, pick a color, thin it just a little bit with white spirit, and paint it on the surface. Once you've done that on the whole model, wipe it off with a dry makeup sponge or Q-tip. When you wipe off oil paints with a dry tool, it's impossible to get the surface completely clean. What you're left with is an extremely thin layer of paint that sort of lubricates the model, making future applications of paint flow and move smoothly across its volumes. Subsequent colors will mix with the active paint left behind on the surface, creating nice, buttery smooth blends. That's why I try and make sure my pre-glaze colors work as shadows for each material I am putting them on. At least some of these colors are going to remain in the deepest recesses on the model, so this is kind of like recess shading with acrylics in reverse. I always make sure to wipe my blending brushes off on some paper towel as I work. The paint you're blending is wet, and you'll pick it up in the bristles of the blending brush as you go. Make sure the brush is clean before you move to a new blend, or you're going to end up mixing a color on the model that you didn't want. Always remember that the paint on the model is wet. This is a good thing. You can completely erase mistakes or tinker with blends until they're just right. Working time of these paints is measured in hours and days, not seconds. So you can always come back and make adjustments as needed. In fact, it's this sort of free-flowing, leisurely quality that appeals so much to me with oils. You're not racing against the fast drying time of acrylics when you're blending wet on wet. There's no mandatory order of operations to follow, no multi-step layering of tones and glazes to get smooth transitions. It's a very calming experience. Dab on a little paint, gently tap with blending brush, repeat until satisfied. Now the point of this video isn't to demonstrate a step-by-step -step process with colors and mixing ratios laid out for you to follow along with. Instead, look at this as an example of what a near complete novice with these paints can do with a little bit of patience and research. If you wanna check out some videos from, in my opinion, true masters of the use of oil paints in the hobby, take a look at the links in the description below. For my money, James Wapple and Marco Frizzoni are just bottomless fonts of information when it comes to what these tools can do. Marco has a style and approach to painting in general that really resonates with me, and his influence on the techniques I tend to use is probably totally obvious if you're familiar with his channel at all. James is an award-winning artist, and his work using purely oil paints is just incredible. He is pretty much constantly streaming on Twitch, check him out there. I claim no credit whatsoever for the methods I'm showing you here. Rather, I hope that watching me work on this model has proven to you that none of this is difficult, and that even if you're not a veteran miniature painter, it's worth branching out to new techniques, trying new things, and flexing your artistic muscles a little bit. Anyway, an hour or so of peaceful dabbing and tapping later, and Arya's all done. After waiting 48 hours for the paint to completely dry, I gave her a quick coat of matte varnish and added a little light landscaping to the base. Let's see how she looks. I'm really happy with this model, honestly. The experience of explaining how I approached it and sharing the process with you, I think helped me internalize some lessons about how to use oil paints more effectively. I hope watching this has inspired you to give a new medium a try and that you'll join me for more videos like this one that are less a procedural guide and more of a demonstration of my own learning process in action. That about does it for this video. Go ahead and give it a like if you liked it. And if you want to follow along with my work, consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, see ya.